Hey guys, I'm Kyoko and welcome to Kenshi Tips. There's a good reason why I'm making this video. When I first started playing this game like a month ago, my community was really really helpful with all the tips and tricks that they were telling me about and how I should handle stuff. And I did a lot of exploring on my own and whenever I, whenever I needed to know something I usually, usually go to the internet and check it out. But for Kenshi there's not a lot of data out there available and if there's data it tends to be also outdated since this game has been in development for so long time that you know things have changed. But now since it's here in 1.0 I thought hey maybe I can give something back to the community that community actually helped me with before. Now, as always with these tips videos, there can be some spoilers and Kenshi is a game where you will really, really benefit a lot if you go out there and explore it yourself and learn things on your own. It will be really rewarding, but I know sometimes it can be frustrating because you don't know something or how something works. So hopefully I'm going to give you some basic tips, nothing too advanced. I want you to find the advanced stuff on your own. So basic tips, here we go. Now, multiple starts are available or viable for beginners and uh, for more advanced people, of course. Now, also it depends what kind of uh, start you take starting, uh, like if you start as a wanderer or a trader or whatever you start as, your starting position will always have some iron and copper mining uh, places outside of any town that you are. So basically, for like real beginners, this is the safest way to go. Go out there and mine some copper. Why copper? Copper sells for way more than iron does. And you could just, you know, mine for a day, fill your bags, it's gonna get your laboring skill up a bit. Uh, you fill your bags, go back in town, sell that, it's gonna at least buy you some food. Maybe you'll earn enough for to buy a companion, and then with more people you can you can speed up the whole process. Also, another thing you can do is you go out there and hang around the gates. There's a good chance that the guards will eventually fight someone, and you can just steal the loot, sell that, or use yourself. Or you can go a bit further out there and pull some bandits or starring boys towards the gate. Uh, and if they see if the guards see them attacking you, they will co they will consider that a crime and they will attack those bandits or you know bandits will attack them and then you can do some more looting you know choose your fight carefully you can you can always get a bit injured and that's gonna get your toughness up which is what you definitely want early on another viable strat that probably more advanced people will use that people that already played it at least a bit is stealing you can you can learn your you can uh, level up your sneak skill by just running around in sneak mode around the town and it's gonna slowly level it up and then you can uh, go inside the shops and bars and stuff and try stealing some stuff that way you can easily make a ton of money early on but it, it of course it has its uh, deficits because if you steal from someone and they catch you they will never sell to you anything or buy from you anymore so if you do that if you do that strat you might want to do it in places that you are sure you don't want to trade with or you don't want to be friends with early on you really want to try to level up your basic uh, stats like athletics strength sneaking uh, toughness things that you will actually need through the whole game so uh, there's different ways to do that like a really good way to actually level up your strength and athletics is you go out there and you you say let's say you mine some iron but you leave that in your inventory so you're carrying a lot of heavy stuff and you're overburdened and then if you see a corpse somewhere you pick up that corpse or dying person and you have them on your back and that's really gonna overwhelm you so you're gonna overweight you so you're gonna really be slow but you can just go into town and just walk around with that and that is gonna really really level up your strength because you are carrying that guy and you're carrying full inventory it's also gonna level up your athletics uh, you can also, if, if you want to level your sneak, you can basically just turn on your sneak mode and just sneak around the town. If people see you, that's 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 completely fine. I mean, they're not going to say, hey, why are you sneaking? Why are you sneaky boy? Right? They're just going to let you be and you can sneak as long as you don't try to break a law. You can sneak around like for a whole day and your sneak skill is going to go insanely up there. Now, if you want to level up your toughness, you might want to, uh, let's say, maybe capture try capturing one of the hungry bandits or dust bandits or some low-level enemies and then just try to martial arts with them 
have them beat you. You just go on block or something and they're gonna try to uh, beat you. Or, you know, get into fights. Basically, that's what is important. Get into fights and get hurt. Just don't try... Just try not to get too hurt because that could have uh, bad remedies. But every fight that you survive, it's gonna make you stronger. Now, of course, early on, it's gonna be tough to actually... Uh, find out which fight is good for you and which fight is better that you run away from but early on running away is always a good idea if you're not sure what to do and then maybe the guards can help you and you can join into the fight now in starting you're not just a weak character that doesn't have really many skills you're also poor in most cases you don't really have money in some cases you do, but that money can go really, really fast because if you want to buy something, it's pretty expensive. And what we're going to talk about here is food. You have to feed your people and that might be one of the early game toughest things, uh, unless you go into really heavy sneaking and thievery. That way you can actually uh, loot a lot of good food and don't need to really care about that. But uh, if you want to live like a proper person an honorable person you might get yourself starving pretty fast now there's some things that you can learn over here that's gonna help you if you have skeletons in your group those people don't need to eat animals do eat quite a lot but animals can actually eat raw fowl meat and foul meat will be usually dropped by most enemies that you fight out there and by enemies and I mean animals like big things or skimmers and stuff like that uh, which you probably shouldn't fight early on, but you can find food on other animals. Um, now, also, um, hivers can actually eat um, fowl meat. So if you have hivers in your group, you can feed them that. And uh, you can also feed just normal raw meat. You can feed that to Scorchlanders. They will eat raw meat and they'll be fine with it. Now, for everyone else, they're special boys and special ladies. And they want to eat some cooked stuff. And to be honest, for you, it's better if you have cooked stuff later on. Or early on, of course. Because it's going to have way more nutrition than just raw stuff. You can uh, also easily cook up the raw meat that you find out there. You can, uh, you can always press B to craft and you can put down a campfire anywhere and in on that campfire you can actually just cook or dry up the raw meat that you found and everybody's gonna be happy to eat that now also if you if you feel one of your character has a backpack or your animal has a backpack you can put the food in there and all the characters around it will use the food from that backpack that's how you also feed your animals like if you have a dog and you have a backpack, If you, uh, your dog is going to just start starving if you don't uh, put the food into the backpack. You can always also drop it on the floor, but uh, backpacks work extremely well in that case. Now, if you decide to live the life of thievery and sneaking and backstabbing and stealing, well, stealing can be really, really lucrative, but you have to learn some basics. Now, every time you steal something or try to lockpick something, there's going to be a tiny... Uh, committed crime uh, on the left on the bottom left that's gonna say hey committing crime for three seconds now if you successfully steal something stay there like if you move I made that mistake before I can tell you in my series as well if you move before that timer goes away and someone spots you they're gonna say hey he's committing crime but if you wait there until that goes away you can just freely walk past people that you just stole from them Unless the, you're in a shop that has already been closed and then you're just trespassing, but that's a different crime. Now, not just that, but uh, when, you are, when you're inside of a shop and you're actually stealing from someone, it depends how far you are from the actual person that sells goods in there. That's going to give you the, the percentage chance of how likely you are to steal. So basically, the closer to that person you are, the lower the chance will be. So, like, let's say if he's sleeping on the roof, on the bottom you should be you should be able to steal stuff way faster you can steal them or way better better chance that uh, if you're trying to steal up top where he is an easy way to actually level up your theory skill is also to loot stuff from the actual floor it's gonna have a way better chance to actually steal that unless someone is looking at you uh, it's way better chance to steal that than if you're trying to steal from containers because that has a like a lower base chance. I don't know if they can actually if uh, if uh, they can actually see you if you pick up from the floor. I think that's like a hundred percent chance that you can actually get the stealing done. And you can just throw it back on the floor if you don't want it. So you can steal like worthless stuff like cups and shit, and uh, then just uh, put them back on the floor and steal some more stuff. 
that's how you can level up your theory pretty fast and then you can go with higher theory you can go steal stuff from the containers as well now if people catch you stealing uh, they might if they if they actually catch you and they beat you down they will put you in prison and you'll have to stay there they will usually take your stolen goods sometimes they're gonna take your weapon as well so uh, it's it's tough if you get caught but well at least you can get your toughness up right uh, also if you manage to escape you'll have a bounty now now bounty unless it's really high like around 20,000 uh, it's gonna go away eventually but uh, if you're out there uh, if you fled the city you will see that your bounty is gray now when it's gray it's not actually taken down what you have to do is get closer to the city until it actually turns green and when it's green you can actually stay out there in uh, or around the city it's gonna slowly take down it's gonna take hours or even days depends on how high it is but you can let's say hide out of the outside of the city in a sneak mode maybe in a position where people are not actually they can't see you uh, and then it's slowly gonna take down and that's that's how you can get your bounty down and then they won't recognize you anymore now when you're choosing your gear which gear to wear there's a couple of things that you can look at and the sooner you learn about that the better now some gear is heavier so it's gonna weigh down your characters more if they have higher strength it's gonna be better for them also if they're over encumbered by a lot of gear they will also level up their strength up so that can be a good way to level up a character in that regard but when fighting usually early on you just get some rags and stuff and they will not have a good protection but there's not just uh, the actual stats, uh, the cut stats and cut protection and stuff that you look at. There's also some weather effects. Now, weather effects are really important. Uh, if it has, like, there's some gas masks, gas masks that have 100% dust storm protection. Now, in the Great Desert, there's a lot of dust storms. And around the hub as well, there's some. So, if you're in a dust storm and your enemies are in dust storm, if you have 100% protection, uh, you will be able to fight without any penalties otherwise there's a minus 10 fighting penalty penalty if you fight in a dust storm also if you sneak around it's gonna be really hard for them to see you if they don't have any uh, dust protection dust storm protection so learn about the weather effects there's also acid rain in some uh, places like uh, the black desert and some further islands out there uh, you can you can get clothing that is gonna if you combine them give you hundred percent acid rain protection and you can put uh, the whole party in those clothes and you can actually go into the let's say black desert because there's a lot of loot that you can gain there but also if you have a skeleton character or a hiver character they don't get hurt by acid rain they can just walk in there and be fine if you have humans or shack they will get hurt if you have animals animals don't get hurt by acid rain either so you can freely bring your animals with you now in the gear there's also sometimes red stats and there's sometimes green stats um, I I made a mistake early on, of course, stupid as I am, uh, because <laughs> the item was named Sneaky Sneaky something, pants I think it was, but in truth it had like 0.38 sneak skill, which basically lowers it, your sneak skill to 0.38 of what the actual amount was. So that's bad, if the skill, if the uh, number is green, then it's good, if it's red, it's not good, but some of the higher level uh, gear you'll find, uh, will actually have a lot of red stats but that uh, is because the gear itself is actually really good but it's heavier uh, it has a lot of protection but it might uh, make it heavier so let's say you find a helmet it has minus five um, perception but it's a really good plate helmet you want to put that on your melee characters because they don't really care about perception perception is for the characters that shoot that have crossbows so uh, if you have that, you can easily put them on your melee characters and they have no issues whatsoever. And then you can put a helmet that has extra perception, let's say, on your rangers. And it all balances out like that. Just need to learn which skill, which point is good for someone and which isn't. Now let's talk about work or, well, job priorities. Uh, you can see on your right where you have uh, your block, your range, your sneak, all that kind of good stuff. You can see also jobs and uh, further on to the right there's this medic job and that's really important that early on right away you click on that you hold your shift and you click on that and that's gonna make medic a permanent job so basically whenever a character gets uh, injured and he's out of a fight he's gonna automatically heal himself now if you have a party of characters and you put everyone on that job they're gonna all heal each other now 
they uh, they heal faster the higher their actual healing skill is and I do like to make all of my warriors able to heal themselves and heal others now eventually when you have maybe robots in your group uh, well skeletons in this case or you have robotic arms um, those guys actually don't use med kits they use uh, skeleton repair kits so when you whenever you shift click on that and you actually have people with robotic arms or skeletons in your group it's gonna also add robotics there and you should always use those two job priorities up top now you can also uh, make uh, job priorities when you build a base. Now, let's say you, you're trying to build a base and you have some blueprints out there. Your best engineer, you grab him and you ho uh, hover over with your mouse over that building, whatever you want to do, and you shift click that and he's going to get a job called engineer. And he's, Whenever there's an engineering job to do, he's going to do it. Now, you can also put your guys uh, on same thing on farming. If you shift click on a farm, on the crafting, on uh, researching, let's say you put down a research bench and you want a person researching, you shift click that bench and uh, other jobs like water hauling or mining or anything you can do, you can shift click it and you guys will actually do that. Now, uh, whenever you're starting to build a base, and I will talk about more base building a bit later, um, what you want to do is uh, whatever your guy is working, let's say he's researching on a research bench on the top of a building that you built. Well, during the night, he's actually going to have a research penalty or crafting penalty or whatever. Uh, so what you want to do is early on build some lights next to the next to the spots they actually stand on. So they are actually in the light during the night as well. Otherwise, it's going to really badly in fact, impact their skills at research and crafting and whatever. Now, before you're starting to start to build your base, there's a couple of things to consider. Especially if this is your first time actually building a base, you might want to wait until you have more people, let's say at least 10, maybe, because there's going to be a plenty of jobs that you actually have to do there uh, to make everything fast and also to defend your base. Because whenever you build your base, it's going to come under attack. Dust bandits will come, hungry bandits will come, all of your like early game enemies will come uh, to greet you and say, hey, you guys probably have some food, I want your food, and they're gonna attack you. Now, if you only have like three people building a base, uh, there's a good chance you're gonna get raided and you're gonna lose all your food in the process and possibly your limbs and maybe your lives. So consider that, consider defense. Uh, if you want to, you can all, always go and pay mercs to actually guard your base. But if you actually have money to pay mercs to guard your base, you probably also have money to recruit plenty of people to regroup and uh, make everything stronger. So maybe that's not really a viable thing early on, unless, as I said, you have money and you want to spend it on that. And maybe you want to be a solo character, who knows. Uh, also, it's a good idea before you actually go out to build a base is to buy a small shack in a town. Like usually the smaller shacks are like around 4,000 cats, which should be really available to you if you're trying to build a base. Build in there a uh, small research bench and buy some research books and then do some research, early early research like walls. Walls is a good idea. Maybe some uh, more building stuff, maybe some more, um, let's see, mining things that you can do. So you can get stone mines, you can get uh, iron processing done, you maybe get copper processing. So all the like early important tags that you can get you might want to research while you're still still in a town maybe just put one guy on that and with the, the other people you have you can go maybe steal some more stuff or do some more adventuring before you actually go and build the base proper because it's you know if you don't have walls research before you start building it could be a bad idea i mean as i said you're gonna get attacked especially if you're hostile to a faction let's say what i did in my uh campaign is i pissed off the holy nation because I allied with Flotsam Ninjas. So I was suddenly at war with Holy Nation and at the same time allied with the Flotsam Ninjas. So what happened is, at some point, the Holy Nation decided, while I was still building my place, is that they want to come and attack me. They actually send an army towards me. Luckily enough, the Flotsam Ninjas, since they are your allies and also at war with uh, the same people that are attacking you, they sent their reinforcements as well, so in the end it was a quite a big, nice battle in my uh, in my town. Now, maybe there's gonna be, if you ally with like a neutral nation, like maybe the people from the shark, whatever bandits they are, 
um, and you get attacked by let's say dust bandits they they might come and say hey we're gonna guard your post because we are your allies right but not always you will actually get allied troops helping you with stuff so now you have everything set up you have the research done you have some building materials that's gonna help you build stuff you have some iron plates because those are the two things you really need to build everything early on so what are you looking for what I personally like is accessibility, so I like to be somewhere in the middle of the map, so I have uh, the same route to all the all the places around. I also really like the Great Desert because it's just my favorite place of them all. It just looks awesome, but not everything is available there, unfortunate. Uh, so what are you really looking for is a couple of things. You need iron, you need copper, you need water, you need fertility, and you need stone. Well, you don't necessarily need all of that, but that, if you have all of that in your base, you're basically set. And you don't need to make any further outposts or buy materials. Now, why I'm talking about this. So, you need to be able to uh, mine iron. So, if you find an iron deposit somewhere, you can mine iron there. And out of iron, you can make uh, iron plates, which are basically usable in everything early on that you build and later on as well. You need copper, because you're going to need some copper to create power. Uh, and power is something you uh, definitely need and of course you also need all these materials if you want to craft some advanced stuff now you definitely need stone and stone availability is well it's available pretty much all over the map but you'll need to build a stone mine right away and get on some stone processing because stone is going to build you building materials which are basically used in building anything from walls to buildings to even the first lamps or torches that you're going to put out there so definitely need that now, if you want to do some uh, cooking and prepare food for your own people without needing to actually buy it or steal it, because whenever you have a big group, you're actually going to need to spend a lot of money to feed them when you go on longer adventures. So cooking your own food is a good idea. So you're going to have to use a prospecting button, which is in the lower right corner of your screen. Use that. That's going to show you the availability of all the resources, but you're really looking for some fertility, because if it's a place it's a fertile, you'll be able to grow stuff. Now, to actually grow stuff, you need water. So, in the desert, that's a really pain in the ass because the best water you can get is like 10%, uh, which is really, really low. So, you need a ton of wells to actually pump that water up. And early on, you'll have to manually pump it up. Pump it up. <laughs> so, uh, if you just have one person do that, it's going to be extremely slow and nothing's really going to grow with just that slow amount of water. Uh, later on, when you can automate that, it's a bit faster, but still not really perfect. So you want to look uh, to a place where it actually has some water. And uh, as I said, fertility, stone, iron, those are your basic needs that you want. And uh, well, I would always advise you to build a wall around your base because as I said, you're going to get attacked and it's going to be nasty. And for defense, you can, whenever you have a gate and like level two walls, you can put a ramp on and you can do some mounted crossbows and you can put your archers up there. Well, and they will use the mounted crossbows while people are trying to beat down your doors maybe do some damage the fact is with crossbows and later on ballistas the higher up you are the more damage you will actually do and the bigger reach you will have with your crossbows or ballistas so later on you can build a tower next to your gate or two and have archers on top of each of the towers or well the turret guards i should say that can deal plenty of damage to the attackers Thank you everyone for watching my tips, I do hope you learned something useful along the way. And if you have any tips of your own, please share them with the community in the comments down below and we can discuss. And also if you have any questions, feel free to post them over here or you can always join my Discord community, the link will be in the description below. And we can always talk about Kenshi or any other games over there. Uh, I also have a series going and uh, in my series uh, the start was really rough because it was my start in actually playing this game like a month ago but now I've learned a ton played for like a hundred hours in this last month and um, I can say that there's more advanced coming in in the future op uh, episodes more advanced stuff and more advanced explorations and combat and stuff so hopefully you check that out if not please enjoy yourself and I uh, hope you learned something new but I'll see you next time.